Hi and welcome to all my dear friends and subscribers of uh, Cricket Happenings. Well, uh, in this uh, Cricket Happening show, uh, we first you are going to look at a match which was played yesterday. I left you with a cricket update at that particular time when Dinesh Ramadan and Darren Bravo had actually put the highest third wicket partnership in one day internationals of 258 runs uh, for the for, for the for, for the third wicket and in fact they eclipsed the record which was held by the South Africans Hashim Amla and A.B. De Villiers. Such was the a tremendous uh, uh, partnership between Dinesh Ramadan uh, who went on to make 159, Darren Bravo made 124 getting into some good form here and finally this uh, the uh, the West Indies total swelled to 338 and uh, which put enormous pressure on the Bangladeshis in the final one day internationals and uh, they had to be uh, they had to be content with a score of 247 but nevertheless they did much better than the second one day international but uh, what happened was that West Indies cleans up the series 3-0 and Dinesh Ramadan took the man of the match and also the man of the series award and why not he played uh, impeccably played in an impeccable manner uh, one could say well so I'll be talking about that match and currently uh, there is a good chase going on uh, between Pakistan and Sri Lanka in fact Pakistan are chasing uh, Sri Lanka's 310 for 9 uh, which was set up by Angelo Matthews once again Angelo Matthews as you know he has been doing all the good things uh, he has as I said he's a central figure in Sri Lankan cricket now after Kumar Sangakaran and Jayavardhane but unfortunately that maiden century has been eluding him he was out for 93 but after that Tisra Pareta smashed 60 yard runs to take the Sri Lankan total uh, in the second one day international against Pakistan to 310 for 9 and currently when I'm talking to you uh, on this update Pakistan have a huge task in front of them but one good thing for them is that Fawad Alam is not out on 30 of 39 balls with 3 fours, and Pakistan require another 80 runs in the next 46 balls for a victory and the, cur and the current run rate is 6.20 but the required run rate uh, is pretty pretty huge 10.43 uh, at this time one can very safely say that Sri Lanka are favorites but they still uh, because Fawad Alam is going to be left with only the tail enders for company uh, and that is the match situation so I'll be talking about that match but first let us go on to the third one day international between West Indies and Bangladesh now I'm going to start off from where I left off yesterday when I left off Darren Bravo and Dinesh Ramadan were in charge and they were played as they had a stupendous partnership as I said they broke the record for the highest third wicket partnership in one day internationals which was set up by Hashim Amla and Ibid Villiers of South Africa and this partnership uh, went on uh, really really piling on runs putting uh, immense pressure on the um, Bangladeshi bowlers and also one should remember that Warner Park Bassetry in St. Kitts is a very small ground so sixes were bound to rain and well it rained 11 sixes of the of Dinesh Ramadan's bat with 8 fours uh, to add up to that and his 169 came of 121 deliveries and Dinesh Ramadan definitely uh, has the real stature now uh, as a very good cricketer for the West Indies because he has been scoring consistently, his skipping has been good and then uh, Darren Bravo who has been really really wanting for form uh, finally got into his own and what a partnership that was and what a time for Darren Bravo to get into form by cracking 124 of 127 balls with 7 fours and 8 six in that partnership of 258 for the third wicket I mean 12 for 2 and then the score went on to 270 for 3 uh, and other than that well there's nothing to really talk about Kiran Pollard was out for 10 uh, probably West Indies would have fancied that they could get on to a total of 370-375 odd but unfortunately Kiran Pollard was an early victim for 10 of 7 balls with 1-4 Darren Sammy who playing the first match today in the series 10, 0, 10, uh, 10 of 9 balls with 1-4 he was gone um, Andre Russell uh, people were thinking that he's going to play but unfortunately he didn't play 
and finally this West Indies total stood at 338 for 7 of 50 overs and while I'm talking to you there is a wicket which is gone here between Pakistan and Sri Lanka and I think now one can safely they say that Sri Lanka is going to win this match as Fawad Alam has been dismissed. Now this was in fact um, while I'm talking to you I see that uh, Tissera Pereira who did very well with the bat by smashing 60 yard runs to take the Sri Lankan score to 310 is currently uh, in charge and the, the reason that I'm going to stay with you dear fans and subscribers is that Tisra Pereira is on a hat-trick. First he dismissed Wahab Riyaz, a wide ball and Wahab, uh, uh, Wahab Riyaz went for it and third man uh, Rangana Harad came into the picture and took the catch. Wahab Riyaz was gone of the second ball of the 43rd over the third ball of the 43rd over, Fawad Alam is gone. That was a, a ball which was uh, slanted across Fawad Alam and uh, in fact uh, Fawad Alam trying to uh, play to carve the ball through the cover region uh, was gone but Fawad Alam was out, caught matches ball, Pereira for 30 or 40 balls uh, with three fours and unfortunately for Pakistan the hopes have ended now and uh, probably uh, now it's very pretty sure that Sri Lanka will be leveling the series at 1-1 and when I, the hat-trick ball is to be delivered uh, let's see what happens. Tisra Pereira coming in, bowls to Mohamed Irfan, the tall batsman. Well, uh, well, but the hat-trick has been awarded as Mohamed Irfan has just got a bat on to it, just pushed at it uh, on the offside and the hat-trick has been averted. So that's the match situation. Pakistan 231 for 9. They require another 80 runs with only one wicket remaining but 42 balls are there. But now Mohamed Irfan and Junaid Khan have to do the impossible. So I can very safely say that Sri Lanka have leveled the one-day series against Pakistan 1-1. Well, we'll come back to that later. So still uh, keeping the talk going on the West Indies versus Bangladesh match. Now looking at the Bangladeshi bowling which came for some heavy pounding. So had Gazi 9 over. So Gazi already under the pump now as you know. ICC has already called him up for a suspect action as you know he's become the fifth off spinner uh, in this particular pro probably in a past month uh, to be called for a suspect action and the the onus has been on the off spinners. Off spinners have been uh, the ones who have been on the center of attention here and he becomes the fifth off spinner uh, to be called for a suspect action so probably that pressure was really telling on him and West Indies probably capitalized on that nine overs. Uh, went for 63 runs. Mustafa Murtaza, who bowled well initially, but then uh, towards the latter stages of the innings, uh, he went for some. Uh, he got some severe beating. 10 over 69 runs on one wicket. Al Amin Hussain, who has been impressive in this series, he has been bowling well. This was his uh, second four wicket bag in the One Day International series. Uh, I thought he was the pick of the bowlers. 10 overs on maiden, 59 runs, and he picked up four wickets. And he was the one who really restricted the. Uh, the, the, the West Indies team uh, from reaching a 375 odd mark. Uh, Abdul Razak uh, was absolutely um, you know taken to the cleaners. 10 overs no made and 1 for 76. Mahmoudullah also bowled well I thought along with Al Amin Hussain. 10 overs no made and 1 for 48 and Momin Uluk bowled 1 over for 19 runs. For Bangladesh this target was a pretty pretty huge one. 339 to win in the final one day international uh, to save some face uh, but um, well, for Bangladesh, um, it was uh, pretty tough going. Uh, in fact, um, once again, Tamim Iqbal, who scored 37 uh, in that uh, score of 70 all out in the previous One Day International, uh, once again uh, played well. Uh, in fact, he contributed 55 of 62 balls with 9 fours. He was looking good. Uh, but the opener, Anamul Haq, was out for a duck. In the Imrul case was out for one. Um, and uh, Mushfiqur Rahim uh, and Anam and um, and Tami Mikbal uh, then slowly tried to stem the rod by putting on 99 runs for the uh, third wicket uh, with that Mushfiqur Rahim contributing 72 of 113 balls with 8 fours but other than that even though Bangladesh showed a bit of a fight not a big fight but definitely a bit of a fight here Momin Haq was out for 5 has been struggling and Tami Mikbal as you know uh, has got a 50 under his belt after quite a long time in international cricket and that too in one day internationals so that was uh, something uh, which uh, Bangladesh would be happy about. And while I'm talking, uh, we also have news, good news coming in from Bangladesh and Bangladeshi cricket fans that Shakib Bil Hassan, one of the kingpins uh, of this uh, kingpin players from Bangladesh, was banned 
the Bangladesh Cricket Board has shown some mercy on him and uh, the news that breaks in it says that uh, Shakib Hassan will be available from September 15 for selection and I think I hail this news I, I really really congratulate the Bangladesh Cricket Board for taking such a decision because he is such an important player uh, as far as Bangladesh is concerned and um, I, th I think Vicer Council has definitely prevailed here and I'm very very happy to know that Shakib Al Hassan will be back in action after 15th of September. Uh, so welcome back uh, Shakib Al Hassan. We, we look forward to you coming in and strengthening this uh, Bangladesh cricket lineup. Well, uh, and for Bangladesh definitely definitely need him uh, in the team. Well, uh, and then Mahmoudullah made uh, 27 of 38 balls with two fours and one six, showing some resistance there. Nasir Hussain went on to make 26 of 28 balls with three fours. Soha Ghazi contributed 24 of 26 with three fours. Murtaza was not out on 15 of nine balls with one four and one six. Razak not out five. And as I said, Bangladesh found it pretty tough going. It was not easy to face the West Indian bowlers, and Bangladesh had to contend had to be content with a score of 247 for 8, thus not only losing the third one-day international match by a margin of 91 runs, but also uh, got, a, got some severe drubbing from West Indies in this uh, three-match three, three one-day international series, where Bangladesh lost the series 3-0. Uh, Jason Holder, 8 overs, no maiden, 1 for 47. The most successful bowler was Ravi Ram Paul. Uh, he was absolutely on target. 10 hours, 2 men, giving nothing away to the batsman. 10 hours, 2 men, 29 runs and 4 wickets. Uh, Dwayne Bravo, 5 hours, 1 men, 1 for 32. Kemar Roche, bowled 9 hours, 1 for 48. Sunil Narin, as, um, as usual, impressive. 10 hours, 1 men, 1 for 31. Chris Gale was the one uh, who was given a long rope by uh, the Dwayne Bravo, probably giving him his, almost his full quota of overs, 8 overs, no maiden, 1 for 58. And as I said, West Indies won the 3 match series, 3 in L. And Dinesh Ramadan of West Indies, the wicketkeeper batsman, taking away the man of the match and also the man of the match seri man of the series. And I thought he truly, truly uh, deserved uh, that um, accolade. Now uh, let's um, get on to the uh, current match. Now uh, the current match uh, that we are uh, talking about, as I said, that's between. And right now I see that's all over between Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Pakistan have been bowled out for 233. Sri Lanka have won the second one-day international match by 77 runs, thus, um, uh, thus leveling the one-day series at 1-1 now. And uh, the last man out was Junaid Khan, who was uh, his timber, uh, his, uh, his leg stump uh, was uh, played by Lasit Malinga, and he's gone. Irfan is not our own one. Now let's have a look at the story uh, that was uh, that went on. Uh, at the Humban Tota ground here, the second one international. Just talking about this particular match between Sri Lanka and Pakistan, the second one international at the uh, paid at the Mahindra Rajapaksa International Cricket Stadium, Syria, in Humban Tota. Uh, well, it was Sri Lanka who won the toss and they chose to bat. For Sri Lanka, it was um, initially, uh, it was not uh, pretty easy going. Junaid Khan gave them the breakthrough by First picking up the wicket of Dilshan who was caught behind for 13. Upal Tharanga uh, played a very, very, uh, very, I would say, quick knock of uh, 27 of 30 balls with five fours, being a victim of uh, Waha Briyaz uh, when Upal Tharanga tried to uh, play a stroke. It was a good delivery from Waha Briyaz, uh, which was slanted across him, and Umar Akmal took the cast. Tharanga was gone. Sangakra played a very loose shot to the bowling of Waha Briyaz, a long hop from Waha Briyaz, and uh, Sangakra ended up uh, into the hands of Sohib Maksud. He was gone for 11 of 16. And the Sri Lankan, uh, there was a definitely a lot of aggression seen because in, in 10 overs, uh, they had 62 on the board for the loss of three wickets. So there was a lot of aggression. But after that, from 62 for three, uh, it was a matter for Sri Lanka uh, to really, really recover from such a situation. And that came in the form of Mahila Jayavardhane and Angelo Matthews. As you know, in the last 20 international tour, it was Miley Jefferson and Angelo Matthews. And today, once again, it was the turn of the same pair, Miley Jefferson and Angelo Matthews, to stitch together a partnership. And they did it in a splendid fashion to add 122 runs uh, for the fourth wicket, uh, with um, Jefferson playing some very good, pleasing shots. In fact, Jefferson was more the aggressor in that partnership with uh, Angelo Matthews. Angel Matthews was using the lap sweep to good effect. Uh, he was also um, targeting the mid-wicket area and uh, with a lot of nurdles 
uh, and you know nurling uh, the balls for singles. So Javan and Matthews then uh, prospered in a partnership of 122. Uh, so finally, uh, it was Mohammad Afiz who came in uh, and broke that very very important stand for Sri Lanka when he had Mila Javan clean bowl for 67 of 74 balls to the eight fours. Uh, Angela Matthews uh, got some company. In fact, Sekubia Prasanna was drafted in today uh, into the team in place of an alpha form uh, Chandimal. Uh, was out for one of the bowling of Mohammed Afiz. Suddenly, after Jayavardhan fell, there were two quick wickets that fell. One was Sekugya Prasanna, who was out for one. And Ashwin Priyanjan, uh, who played very well in the second one day the first one day international, was LBW bowled uh, Mohammed Afiz for three. And Mohammed Afiz had taken three wickets uh, in, uh, in, in that span. And suddenly, the Sri Lankan innings, which had recovered uh, through the efforts of Mahila Jayavardhan and Angelo Matthews, once again found themselves uh, in a lot of trouble at 194 for 6 in the 38th over suddenly and then uh, it was left to Tisra Pereira to really really finish uh, uh, take this I mean it was a really wonderful effort he got definitely good company from Angelo Matthews uh, Angelo Matthews and Tisra Pereira uh, then put on a very in fact Angelo Matthews was there so that was a good thing for Sri Lanka and then uh, Tisra Pereira joined in and Tisra Pereira decided to really, really smash the ball to all parts of the field. Uh, he was really, really targeting the leg side. So whenever, and especially towards the end, we saw Tisra Pereira hammer the Pakistani pace bowlers absolutely on the leg side. Junaid Khan, uh, Mohamed Irfan, Wahab Riyaz didn't matter for him. Everybody went for plenty. And what a knock from Tisra Pereira. Um, Angela Matthews, once again, as I said, uh, he, his problem has been... Uh, that he has, is the maiden one day century has been eluding him till now uh, I, and does not know one can't even keep a count of how many times Angelo Matthews has got out into his 90s and well once again Angelo Matthews today uh, contributed 93 of 115 balls with 8 fours and as I said it was Tisra Pereira who finished off in a smashing style he was uh, run out uh, for 65 of 36 balls with five fours and four sixes but he has done he had done immense damage to the Pakistani bowlers and that is what enabled uh, the Sri Lankan total to go over the 300 mark and finally they finished at 310 for 9 of 50 overs and finally as you know that turned out to be a winning score for the Sri Lankans. Uh, Mohamed Irfan as I said that uh, they got some tap today one for none for 65. Junaid Khan continues to uh, have problems with his bowling. Eight overs went for 64 runs with one wicket to his name. Waha Briyas um, was uh, really, really uh, taken to the clean. Uh, in fact, uh, he was the most successful bowler with uh, four wickets for 65 runs. Shai the free, the 10 overs none for 51. Uh, Hafiz, who caused um, quite a sort of a, a real uh, a turmoil in between the innings after the Jayavardhani and Jayavardhani and Angela Matthews partnership, where he took three wickets pretty quickly. Then I was no made a none for 33, 39, and I thought he was the best of the ballers today. Ahmed Shahzad, two overs, no made a none for 15. As far as Pakistan were concerned, they had to chase a good talk, um, a huge target of 311 to win. Uh, but Pakistan, they definitely started off in breezy fashion today. As you know, uh, Shah Jil Khan was the opener, but Shah Jil Khan uh, couldn't do much. He was out for nine, caught Herat bowled Malinga for nine. But the next, once Shah Jil Khan was gone, uh, the innings really gained a lot of impetus as. Um, Mohamed Hafiz uh, was the one who was playing all the strokes. Uh, he was playing his strokes with gay band. It didn't matter to him who the baller was. He also went after Lasit Malinga and hitting for some beautiful boundaries. Ahmed Shahzad uh, was uh, playing uh, in, uh, in, in, in both modes. He was defensive as well as offensive. And Ahmed Shahzad and Mohamed Hafiz went on to uh, really, really you know give Pakistan a lot of hope because they were the way they were scoring they had actually taken the score over the required run rate uh, and that was pretty good to see and thanks to Mohamed Afiz who made 62 uh, and the score uh, it was a 96 run partnership uh, which came in 15 overs and that was something uh, which really really uh, helped Pakistan uh, but after that uh, when this partnership was uh, going uh, pretty well. That was the time the, the turn. We, we saw that Sekubge Prasanna was introduced and Sekubge Prasanna today as you know he came, he was preferred um, for Dinesh Chandimal and he definitely delivered by first picking up the wicket of Mohamed Afiz when Mohamed Afiz was gone to a ball 
uh, which turned. Probably Mohamed Afiz playing for the turn, but the ball went in straight, wrapped him on the pads, and Mohamed Afiz was gone. LBW goal Prasanna for 62 with 11 fours. Once Afiz went, uh, Umar Akmal uh, uh, departed pretty early. Not a good shot at all from Umar Akmal, as uh, he actually tried to hoik uh, um, to Dilshan, and he ended up in the hands of Sankakra. He was gone for one, which made the score 115 for three, and then Ahmed Shahzad uh, also went back to the pavilion. All, I mean, uh, uh, Pakistan had done a, such a good job, and suddenly when these wickets fell, again the pressure came on Pakistan, as Ahmed Shahzad, after playing a good knock of 56 of 80 balls, the six fours, once again Sakugya Prasanna was the man who took the wicket, and suddenly we also saw that there was some turn in the pitch too, and that was what the spinners were exploiting, especially Sekugya Prasanna, uh, the Ramafi. And uh, uh, once Ahmed Shahzad went, the score was 147. After that, it was um, suddenly these Pakistani innings couldn't really gather any momentum. Barring Ms. Bawal who made 36 of 51 balls with 3 fours, and Fawad Alam, who contributed 30 of 40 balls with 3 fours, there was no momentum in the Pakistani innings. And, Sha and also Soeb Maksud, after uh, the hero of the, uh, the first one day national, smacked the six of the bowling of Herat by lifting him over the top. But uh, the very next delivery, Rangana Herat actually had Soeb Maksud uh, defending and being adjudged LBW for nine with one six. And Shahid Afridi contributed only 17 of 10 balls with three fours. And as I said, the challenge for Pakistan ended with uh, Pakistan being all out for 233. Uh, thus, um, uh, Sri Lanka not only registering a victory by 77 runs in the second run international, but also going on to level the series 1-1. So the bowling figures, four over the, the best bowler was um, Tisra Pereira, three was no made in three for 19. The next best was Sekugya Prasanna, ten was no made in two for 36. Dilshan bowled five overs, one for 25. Ashan Priyanjan bowled three overs for 17. Uh, Kulishekara, four overs, one made in none for 23. was not brought on to ball, one does not know why, probably due to injury. Uh, Malinga didn't, didn't look uh, so effective today, 6.5 overs, no made in 56 runs and 2 wickets. Rangana had uh, bowled his quota pretty well, 10 overs, 2 made in 238, and, uh, this, is, and uh, this is how the match ended. And the 3 match series now is level at 1-1, so the final match is going to be a real, real, really going to be a very, very exciting affair. Whichever team wins will take the series. So what a match we're having. So dear fans, subscribers. Uh, I think I'm almost um, about to end my cricket happening show for today. Hope you all enjoyed my cricket show as usual. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host Ram uh, will be seeing you uh, tomorrow. Until then, and let me tell you, tomorrow uh, we also have two matches coming up. Uh, one is the second one day national between England and India, which is going to be played at Cardiff. Hopefully there's not going to be any rain. The news is good. That's going to be warm and sunny over there, which is good news. But probably later in the evening there could be some rain, so that is not good news. And also there's one more match which is coming up and that is one of the match of the Tri-Series, which we are all looking forward to. It is South Africa versus Australia tomorrow. And what a match. This is the one uh, which is going to be the centerpiece uh, as far as the Tri-Series in Zimbabwe is concerned. As you know, Zimbabwe uh, are not being performing well and they are definitely the underdogs. We all know for a fact that South Africa and Australia will be clashing in the final because Zimbabwe... Uh, are finding it pretty tough here. Well, anyways, uh, that really, really uh, winds up my Cricket Happenings show for today. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host, Ram, uh, will be there with all the reports of all the matches to, uh, for tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye on this show. Thank you.